You don't beg for something you already have. Understand this, this is vital. You are a citizen of a kingdom. You have legal rights. So stop your begging, stop your whining. It's based on law. He has given you the kingdom. What does it mean, Hebrews chapter four, the Sabbath rest for New Testament believers? Pastor Brown came to a meeting I was holding. In fact, we held a meeting with several pastors, probably 24, 30 pastors. And we were talking along these lines concerning the earth curse system and how the kingdom of God operates, how Drenz and I got out of debt, how it changed our lives. And uh, so at the end of the meeting, uh, they all left, but Pastor Brown hung back in the parking lot waiting for all the other pastors to leave. He came back up to me at the end of this conference and said, Pastor, I'm about to lose my house. In fact, I lose it if by the end of this week, I can't come up with $6,700. I have $100 to my name, and it's right here. And I'm gonna sow that, just like you taught. I'm gonna believe what God said. I'm gonna sow that and believe that God's gonna provide my $6,700. So we joined hands with him, we prayed for him right there. I saw him about a month later, and he was bouncing off the walls. He comes up, hey, Pastor Gary, how's it going? I gotta tell you what happened. Well, I know what happened. The law works. The kingdom operates. He goes, it's amazing. We had this little silk screen machine in our garage. Oh, every once in a while we'd do a little t-shirt for this youth group or something. He goes, you know, when I got home, I had three phone calls. People wanted silk screen stuff done. We do a few thousand dollars a year. We did $8,700 in one week. I paid my house current. He goes, I just wanted to tell you, it's absolutely amazing. Yes, it is. I was in a conference in North Carolina, another pastor's conference. This pastor from Germany walks up to me and he goes, are you Gary Cassie? I said, yes, sir. He goes, I gotta shake your hand. I said, okay, fine. He goes, I gotta tell you what happened. He says, my son got a hold of your CDs in Germany. I don't know how, but they got there. I think we're probably on TV over there maybe. And he goes, he heard about how you sowed for the deer and how the kingdom of God operates. And he comes in my office in my study and he, this guy's a pastor, he's getting ready for Sunday. Dad, I'm gonna believe God for a PlayStation 3. Or I think at that time it's probably PlayStation 2. I'm gonna believe God for one of those. His dad says, what do you mean? His dad hadn't listened to the CDs. His son said, well, this is how it works. This is how the kingdom of God operates and you know, you know, the running system, the labor and toil system and all that. And his dad says, well, okay, I'll agree with you. So they took a seed out and they sowed that seed. He said, a couple days later, this guy calls him out of the blue and said, hey, uh, can your son spare some time? I'd like to hire him for a day of work down at my shop. And in that one day he made enough money to pay for his PlayStation 2. He says, that is awesome. About two weeks later, he comes back into his dad's office again. Hey, dad, I want you to agree with me for something else. Catch this, this is the key. I believe this, once you have one experience with the kingdom, it changes your life forever. I mean, really, once you experience the first, like, what? How did that happen? How did that dog show up? How did that, how'd those fish show up? How'd that bread? Once you have that one experience, it goes, whoa, everything's possible. He says, dad, I want you to agree with me for muscles. Dad says, now son, muscles will take your involvement, you know. He says, I know, Dad, I know, Dad. I want to, I want to agree. Will you agree with me for muscles? Oh, okay, I'll agree with you. So they, they sowed a seed and they agreed for muscles. The next morning, a car pulls into their driveway and a guy knocks on the pastor's door. He goes, hey, we were cleaning our garage out. I don't know. I know I got this old barbell set. I didn't know if your son would like it or not. He said, when I saw that barbell set show up, he says, son, give me those CDs. <laughs> That's right. And so he was at that conference. It's fun to talk about the kingdom. It's fun to see how it operates. So here's what God taught, trying to teach Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities that, help me out, you did not build. No painful toil and sweat. Filled with all kinds of good things that you did not provide. No painful toil and sweat. Wells that you did not painfully toil and sweat over. Vineyards and olive groves you didn't painfully toil and sweat over. 
And when you eat and satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, the other kingdom, out of the land of slavery. Luke chapter 12, verse 16, Jesus is telling us the mindset of the world system. In Luke chapter 12, verse 16, we'll find it here. He says this, I'm going to tell you a story, he says, in verse 12, verse 16, he told this parable, the ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns, build bigger ones, and there I will store all of my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, what? You have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. This is the mindset of the earth-cursed individual's mentality that if he can finally get enough stuff saved up, then he finally can take life easy, find something else to do besides just running after money and be happy. And of course, God says right here, that you missed the whole thing, bud. You missed the whole thing. That's not life. You worked and did all that and you lost it all anyway. That's not life. But that's the, that's the mentality. So again, Hebrews chapter four, verse nine says, there's a Sabbath rest. You can't have rest until you have provision. They could not work on the Sabbath. So let's talk about the Sabbath. Genesis chapter one, let's go back in time and discover the Sabbath. Again, they could not sweat on the Sabbath. Verse 31, God saw that all he, all he had made and it was very what? It was good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all of their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. He wasn't tired. Why did he rest? Because he was finished, not tired. Everything is complete. Everything is there for man to live in the seventh day. God blessed the seventh day, made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he'd been doing. So the Sabbath, Adam lost the Sabbath. Adam lost the seventh day. He gave it away. He reverted back to an incompleteness. When you live in debt as a lifestyle, you're living in a life of incompleteness. And you're, you're you know, still running to get it complete. You're trying to complete that picture. But Adam gave it away completely, and there was no rest. There was no provision. He had to make up the differences. He had to keep surviving, keep surviving, trying to get back to that seventh day in his own strength, trying to get enough where he could stop, trying to get enough where he could stop, trying to get enough where he could stop. Because in the heart of man, I believe, there's that, there's that uh, drive to, we know there's more than just working. Now, work can be your, don't misunderstand me, when you're in your assignment, you do work there, and there is great satisfaction. But I'd have to say most people are not in their assignment. They're living, they're living for money. They're just exchanging hours for dollars. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.